anytime. Okay. I'm trying to pull on the sock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm, I would like to call this meeting to order. Um, review of the minutes of the previous meeting. Anybody? We didn't get them. I don't recall. We didn't get them. Yeah. You didn't get them? Yeah. You didn't get them? Yeah. So we'll do it, just do it the nope. next time, I guess. Yeah. I guess we'll do it the next time. I guess. Well, I have my copy here. I thought they were sent to everybody. So, yeah. no, okay. Do you have minutes? I think you have Uh Next on the agenda, stakeholder discussion, introduction, and parcel overview. Um, Werner, with Werner. There he is. Okay. <coughs> Werner, do you want to take over on the stakeholder discussion? Or Lori? Uh, yep. We're both. Okay. <laughs> I get the choice. You're on. So, and know Lori suggested it would probably be a good idea to go around the table and introduce ourselves. Yep. Uh, I'm Bob Metcalf with Mitchell Associates, we're the uh, lead consultant on the team. And then. Christy oh. uh, Christy Mateo with Goral Palmer. Nina, you're up. Nina Perlmutter with the Planning Board Committee. Uh, Larry Simmons with the Planning Board. <clears throat> Dan Saunders with the Growth Planning Committee. Barbara Barwise, Growth Planning Committee. <laughs> Jamie. Uh, Jamie House with the Steering Committee. Russ Green. Russ Grady on the steering committee. Sheila Matthews Bull, Selectman. Mike Weston on the steering committee. Connie Dykstra on the steering committee. Tim Patterson, steering committee. John Harcourt, steering committee. Tom Bradbury, Kenny Bunkport Conservation Trust. David Kling, Kenny Bunkport Heritage Housing Trust. And Patrick Briggs, tonight I'm in the Kenny Bunk. Heritage Housing Trust. <laughs> okay, thank you. So this first step in part of the process of getting the master plan going and going through some interview processes with the various committees, uh, stakeholder groups in the community uh, to get information and feedback that helps us as a team and working with the steering committee to start moving forward with the ultimate goal is to come up with a master plan for the parcel itself. Uh, that being said, tonight, uh, this afternoon, the first group we're going to be talking with, and we try to focus it more around sort of the land use elements is the Planning Board, uh, the Conservation Trust, the Housing Trust, and the Growth Planning Committee. So uh, I know the coroner had sent out to everybody a copy of this plan that's above, uh, which is an overview of the site, and I'll do a quick run through on that as well as a series of questions just to start stim uh, stimulating conversation in terms of getting your committee's individual ideas in terms of things you see as far as potential uses for the property and what the needs of the community are. And part of this whole thing in terms of developing a master plan is really more than just the site itself. It's having an understanding of what the community's needs are and how this site may avail itself for the community and the town to be able to recognize the value of the parcel. So with that, uh, the parcel itself, it's an 86.6 acre parcel. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I should probably get one of those to pin on to me. They do this to me at the planning board in Kenny Buck as well. Uh, the property fronts on North Street and then it has frontage on School Street. Uh, the connection between all the way from North to School Street is just based on this rough layout of uh, the road that has been cleared in there, is just over a mile in length. Uh, the property itself of the upland areas on site, uh, we've identified primarily the areas that are in the darker gray. Those are the upland areas, and that totals about 52 plus or minus acres of actual upland area. On the property itself, there's a 135 foot wide CMP transmission easement that runs through and bisects the site here. There are three significant vernal pools that were identified on this site, one in this location here, adjacent to Wallace Woods, and then another one that falls on this end of the CMP easement that actually encompasses, actually the vernal pool sits just about in the, the corner right in that location. 
the third one is this area up in here. This represents a 100-foot no disturbance area required around the vernal pool itself, so that's a limitation. Uh, there are two streams that bisect the site that come out of existing wetlands on the site. Uh, one course is here, connects here. The other one travels down through here. They merge together, and then they come down through, and then they cross underneath North Street and ultimately come out into what on the USGS map describes as Bass Cove entering into the Kennebunk <coughs> River. The wetland areas on site, uh, yeah, I didn't write my total. There's about 16 acres of forested wetland areas that are uh, on the property in various locations. These symbols here represent where the wetland areas are. This corridor for the stream itself, there's a red line that runs around the perimeter of that. That's a shoreland zone mandated setback from the stream itself. Uh, so that's a regulatory uh, requirement that's imposed by the state under the shoreland zoning. That gives you kind of an overview of the parcel itself in relationship to its location. Wallace Woods, which has just recently been developed, is on this location here. Uh, the wine trout property is on borders almost the entire length in here. There are several lots in Bishop's Wood, Woods that abut on this corner here. Uh, there's two parcels of the Daggett property here. Foxbury Woods is located here. Shawmut Woods abuts up to this side of the, the property itself. Bailey Court for reference off of School Street. Uh, then the other large land area that abuts this property is the McCabe property that fronts on School Street. Uh, distance from North Street, uh, we put a radius on here just to give you kind of an idea in terms of distance from the North Street entrance as to where that actually relates to. Uh, from North Street down to Dock Square is about half a mile. And then on this side here, uh, this gives you the radius of where we're roughly in terms of distance from uh, School Street. Consolidated School is in this location here. Obviously, the radiuses are looking if you could go as the crow flies. But So that's kind of an overview of the process, the property itself. Uh, there's roughly 6,100 linear feet of roughed-in roadway alignment that goes in here. This section of the roadway is pretty much dictated by the shoreland zone setback requirements in terms of where that alignment can go. And then the same thing on the school street side, that side is pretty well controlled by its location and usability of par property along that side. And there is some flexibility that can occur within that zone in there. Uh, public sewer and water were extended up North Street uh, in our stub to the entrance uh, where the curb cut is right now. So it has, uh, that was installed prior to the repaving of North Street. So, so that's, uh, I think, kind of an overview uh, of the property itself. Uh, it's a little more detailed than the documentation that was handed out uh, by Werner. So with that, what we'd like to try and do is start through the questions. And this should be a challenge, probably, with the number of committees here, how we can try and handle that. Uh, we had kind of set it up for identifying the Planning Board, the Conservation Trust, the Housing Trust, and the Growth Planning Committee and try to tackle each one of those groups independently rather than doing one question for everybody to answer or we can do it that way if you, how the committee would feel best efficient for them if we do a review of each question for each committee or take each committee individually and go through the eight questions. I would consider taking each question and just ask everyone here. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Okay. So the first question is what does your committee generally know about the village parcel? So it's a generic question. I gave you information in terms of the property itself. but. And is there going to be one spokesperson or multiple spokespersons from each of the committees? Well. <laughs> I'm just asking the question. <clears throat> okay. I'll chime in. The planning board basically only has jurisdiction when there's an application before it. And so we don't speak to the design of a parcel or whether it fits anybody's needs. We are basically uh, charged with um, looking at the jurisdiction 
under the land use ordinance, whether it fits into the zones, and whether it meets all the requirements of the, of the, uh, the uh, conditions of the zones. Um, so as far as question one is concerned, all I can say um, is when we last dealt with the uh, parcel, and we're familiar with it, um, CDMK came before us to extend a deadline, and <clears throat> we extended that deadline for another year. That was the last that the planning board did with it. That ended, our jurisdiction ended when the uh, town acquired the land. And uh, we, we don't feel that we have any jurisdiction at this point. In fact, there's a question of whether the planning board should really be a stakeholder in this situation with the village parcel because so, we- So Nina, I don't think that you need to take it as literally mm -hmm. as the planning board. But more as the planning board, you see a lot of development happen in town. You see, you know, various applications. You kind of have a, a bigger picture view of what the needs of the community are or what you sense the community wants. It's, you know, you're kind of wearing two hats. Okay. Well, I'll tell you from my experience on the planning board that there are certain restrictions I would put on the parcel. One of them is if you're going to develop housing, uh, low-income housing or, you know, residential housing, that it should really be closer to the school street side because um, <clears throat> on the planning board we see a lot of traffic issues and we deal with them. And I can tell you as a resident off Lock Street that in the summer because North Street comes down from Route 1, that that traffic now backs up past Lock Street during the summer days. And School Street, I know, does not get that kind of activity. So in order to keep traffic flowing in town, I would consider, you know, uh, any residential de development uh, more on the School Street side. Also, wetlands um, are a concern. There's a lot of wetlands in there. There's a lot of forested areas that, um, you know, Kenny Bunkport has a lot of scenic areas, has a lot of areas that could be used to integrate people with uh, trees, nature, and I've said this all before. A lot of the things that come before us on the planning board, one, a, a couple of questions we have to ask ourselves, which are in 1010A and 1010B under the land use ordinance, is, is this going to change the scenic beauty of the town? Is this going to change the wildflower wildfowl or the uh, fisheries or, you know, nature in any way, uh, other species that live there. And uh, sometimes it, it's a difficult thing to do. And with this much wetlands, you're going to have an impact if you develop a lot of it. Larry, you want to speak to that? Well, I think that summarized it pretty well there, Nina. Thank you. Um, um, the only other thing I might add is that uh, nobody on the planning board now was a member when C, uh, CDMK got their approvals initially, so we're taking a sort of a fresh look at it. We have no preconceived ideas, except that we would like to preserve the, the qualities inherent in the Kitty Bunkport region. Okay. Well, from the uh, Growth Planning Committee, of course, I have to say that what we'd want is something that would be consistent with their comprehensive plan. Uh, primarily, because that's that's what we have to rule on if there is any ordinance change uh, coming forward on on land use. So, um, having said that, we are actually in, we are initiating the rewrite, the modifications to our comprehensive plan. So there are opportunities if the town wants to do by vote to make some changes that need that need to have the comprehensive plan massage to meet that. We can that's something obviously we can look at. Um, the area, of course, is in an area that's uh, been designated in our growth area. Um, I'm not sure if the total 86 acres is so, but uh, so that's you know an important part that we have felt that strive to push development to the growth areas, areas where we already have uh, sewer and water. So from that standpoint, what the, the it's kind of open for what the um, steering committee wants to lead towards. Okay. Right. Um, you know, there are, I forget what the number is, 188 different strategies within the comprehensive plan, so 
Um, there's many different opportunities, I guess, that we could we could go with this. In terms of when the growth planning committee has been looking at the growth area, have you had focuses in terms of looking at the defined areas for growth as to visions of what could happen in the growth area? Um, I wouldn't say so much to have like a, a vision of what that growth area would be, but we we just we, you know, we have growth cap in our town. Yeah. Um, and to justify that, we established growth areas, a transition area, and a rural area, and then identified growth permits based on those areas. And they're they're not um, they're not tied to zones, right? So it's basically just three large areas within the town, yeah. and they basically expand um, out from a thousand feet from uh, where we have uh, uh, city sewer or city water. Is our growth <coughs> areas. And then in between that and, and the rural area, we came up with a transitional area. And so that's only been adjusted once since we put the, we passed the conference of plan in 2012 uh, due to some uh, increase in our, our sewer and water to some sites. Um, having said, most of our development still is a lot of our permits get pulled for the rural and for transition. We always have open permits on the growth areas. Work. Correct me if I make an error in any of those statements. <laughs> yeah, the the only thing that I would add is that uh, you know within the comp plan there are uh, there's dialogue in, in the comp plan that talks about kind of a vision of areas, yeah. uh, you know, and so the village you know the village areas you know uh, is pretty well described in you know in terms of what the character of that should be like, uh, and so I think that's you know with this piece being you know within that uh, within proximity to the village that would be the that would be the description that I would, you know, that I would put forward from the comp plan. Yeah, yeah so pull that up. Good point. Thanks. Okay. I have a question regarding the comprehensive plan and and you're uh, looking at, are you looking at, uh, for instance, most of the most of this is in the um, free enterprise. Mm -hmm. Are you looking for changes in perhaps use permitted use <coughs> in those zones? Uh, not at the moment. Not at the moment. Oh, yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, no, not at the moment. Okay. Um, but and, and a permitted use is a pretty lengthy list. Yeah, but mm -hmm. yes. Okay. <clears throat> Yep. Yeah. Here. <clears throat> uh, from the trust point of view, I think we want to look at this property in the context. Um, of the whole town and the needs of the whole town. And the trust primary purpose is to maintain the, and preserve the essential beauty and character of the community. And that includes uh, wildlife habitat and uh, areas for wildlife habitat. It includes places for uh, public recreation and enjoyment and places of scenic beauty that we want to maintain and that sort of thing. But the town also has other needs in terms of, of um, affordable housing and uh, municipal buildings and such. And so I think in, in, in figuring out a plan for this property, the committee should do its best to look at what already exists in the whole town uh, what's preserved, what isn't, where things are located, and and um, try to use this to look 50 years, 100 years into the future, and think big, and and um, try to assess what needs aren't fulfilled, and how this property could fulfill those we needs as well as visually and connectively um, fitting in with the general look and feel of the community as a whole. Tom, what are your thoughts about that, about looking into the future 15 years? I think it's, I mean, there, you, there are things that um, the town has to consider. I mean, one of them is affordable housing. Another one is um, that, that uh, climate change and how will climate change affect Dock Square, for instance. And if Dock Square is affected, then what needs will be pushed further inland, and could this be a parcel that might fulfill some of these needs uh, that, that 
fire stations if we if we um, because of a lack of volunteers end up going to paid do we need a more central station and is this property more central than other places for for that and um, and so just just to do the best it's all of it's all um, guesswork in many cases but or project out and and um, will there be a need for more everybody is getting older and is there a need for having a, a facility in town that would accommodate people that want to stay in their own town as they age and and uh, that sort of thing Well, speaking from the housing trust standpoint, uh, this was never on our scope when we set up this housing trust at all. So we never had this as part of our vision. What we wanted to do is to conserve the nature of the town, the culture of the town. And having been through the process when the Board of Selectmen decided to go ahead and ask the town for permission to buy the land, I thought this is a fabulous opportunity for the town because we've got needs that were frustrating the town. And how do we take care of this? Where do we go? What's the cost going to end up being? And having this in front of us, it's an opportunity to, to say, okay, take a moment, take a deep breath, sit back, and let's look at what the town wants to do with this land. What does the town need to do? Now, as far as the housing trust goes, we offer a variety of options, but we're not going to be getting into that at this time because it depends on what the town wants to do. As Tom pointed out, when things are changing in Dock Square, does this push that element to the west? I call it west. I'm not sure whether it's north, east, or just which direction it is. But the point is, is it an opportunity to relocate to this area and say, okay, we can have a new town center? that would begin to meet the needs of the year-round population. So we see lots of opportunity, and we want to be mindful of that going forward. We want to be involved in giving the town the options that they, they want to do. It's not solely up to us, but I share much of Tom's <laughs> vision. You need to look down the road. David? That's good. Good, okay. Okay. Uh, some of the dialogues already hit on some of the elements of the next questions, but uh, based on some of the comments, you know, the next question is what are the important issues that should be considered? And I guess I'll kind of jump on, you know, the housing aspect is just one point while the trust is, and I don't know enough about the housing trust yet, but, you know, if your goal is to looking at what the housing needs are in terms of affordability and being encouraging younger families that move into the community in terms of, I guess, the best way to look at this thing, thank you, is a wish list, you know, and I guess the way, in terms of a planning process, I'll step back 10 steps. You're looking at this at the 10,000 foot level. You want to look at what you really think could happen, what you really would like. And this whole process basically is going to come down and my tongue tight, synthesize everything down. And you're going to identify, I mean, you may come up with, you know, we want to put in a 35 foot, I mean, a 35 story building in the middle of the site to accommodate everybody's needs. Obviously, that's a wish dream way off the outer land. So, from what I'm saying, is think outside the box in terms of what might address the issues and concerns that your various committees have. And this is going to be town wide input so that we can, as, a, as your consultants, work with you to try and refine how some of these things may fit into this site. You know, you're looking at it as your long-term needs of how you're going to be able to address, you know, the community's desires into the future. This isn't something that's going to be a master plan in three years from now. You know, you're going to be looking at shovels going on out here and building all sorts of things. You know, this is a projection over, you know, a 10, 20, 50-year time frame. But in order to be able to have an understanding of your vision of what could happen out here, and then whether or not it's feasible. You know, part of our whole master planning process will be a marketing analysis 
based on what we as a community and our the consulting team working with you comes up as a vision. And then Kamoyan, who is part of our team, will look at it and say, yeah, that's great ideas, but it may not financially work on this piece of property. So that's part of the whole gamut of what we're going to go through so that when you get to that final document at the end, you know, we're identifying potential uses, what opportunities, what constraints there are to try and give the community some idea in terms of cost, ultimately some public-private partnership opportunities. You may find that an affordable housing entity wants to come in and, you know, it may be one of the first things that happens. And I'm just throwing these out just for points of discussion. So think outside the box a little bit beyond what, you know, when you were talking about the planning board's perspective. And I know it's a challenge because I sit on the planning board in Kennebunk, but we also look at it from land use development as well. So thinking, you know, in terms of seeing what you see for development that's coming into the community, what are the type of needs there are. And I'm going to step back one step further. <coughs> forget that this is even zoned. Forget the free enterprise. Forget the village residential. When you start thinking about uses, because there's always a possibility of either to accommodate the type of uses you feel as though you want to put in. The parcel is large enough. It doesn't fall into what people consider like spot zoning. You're not taking like five acre piece, but we also use that to be more than that. Well, so there's a lot, lot of tools in the toolkit that you can work with you see in terms of ultimately coming, coming out of the community plan, plan what kind of use you got. And I've got some not a lot of throw at you as you start to get into this process. <laughs> Just as we're moving forward to be able to continually think about these things, you start to think about using. There's going to be a lot more opportunity for these committees and the public to participate and the more we can stimulate and hopefully folks are watching home. We start generating some of that thought process all under what you don't consider like So I guess from a planning perspective, you know, if you, as the board, seeing what you're seeing, what you see is... I think you could write a book around that. Mm -hmm. um, plan, kind of give you some guidance. The things that come before us are the things that have to be approved. Just as we're moving forward. And that's usually the size of houses, sometimes in various zones. There's going to be a lot more opportunity um, these committees. Subdivisions. So we, we don't see all of the changes that come through, but I will talk to a, a few of them. I guess from a planning perspective, you know. We see a lot of applications for enlargement of buildings, rebuilding of buildings. I think you could write a book on I call it imaginization sometimes because people want to sell high houses at a higher price. We see a lot of docks coming in. Uh, even if they don't have a boat, they want to add docks. Um, and a lot of people come into town, and I think from other areas that are more suburbia, we don't see um, all, I don't want to mention other states and so forth, but they bring with them their idea of the little house with a little bit of lawn and so forth and so on. And um, the subdivisions do pretty well. When they come in, usually they lot a lot of land and they keep the houses pretty reasonable. But um, one of the problems with the town is, uh, and I'll take this from the shade that I'm on, is there, before this plot of land, we only have from town only owns 12 forested parcels, and the largest ones, which are 60 acres or so, are all landlocked up near the Bedford Line. I think the, we have to look to the future to reserve some land to see where we want it. The subdivisions do pretty well. When they come in, usually they allot a lot of land. I can see land use ordinance changing over time. As Kenny Bunk Board becomes more populated, more populated and people are enlarging houses, I think we need some changes, changes and maybe even more before this restrictions land, on we only what they can do with town only you know, 12 uh, in terms of parcels. enlarging our house. And the largest ones, which um, is I hate to say that so because as a private property owner, I don't mind. You know, yeah, I, don't I don't like to see restrictions, restrictions of what I can do. We have to look to the future but, um, to reserve some land it, to see where we want it. See, Kenny Bunk. The, the zoning, zoning ordinance only covers to a certain point. point. I can see the For land. example, in subdivisions, the developers have to identify bunk trees of a certain diameter. But there's no restriction on what they do with the landowner does with that afterwards. I mean, the association documents say put out and they say you can't cut the trees or they may not address that at all. Um, and people don't understand. Um, I think 
as, as you I see, can even change, change, but, change but, um, and the flavor of people, people coming in. Change. The zoning ordinance you, only you can put, put in affordable, affordable housing, but um, for example, we, in some we still see an awful lot of people coming in that, that want to have a vacation house, that want to have a place, you know, for all the family to gather and so, so forth. forth. You're, You're going, going to have to deal with, with this in terms of land use ordinance. Put out, may um, say you can't I brought up, or it may not address much to the chagrin of my colleagues saying, questions about how to interpret the land use ordinance around or the change people can enlarge in, in, in certain zones, zones people coming um, in. So change. For, for the future, all I would say is that we need to look carefully in the development of this and maybe reserve something and watch how can yeah, Bunk Court goes, goes as, as, as more people move into it, it and basically as the character changes. I mean, one of the things we're seeing is people buying houses for rentals. They're not staying here year-round, and um, that's growing. And questions you may have to deal how to interpret the land use part-time residents and what they want. And, and their so needs, um, they, they may not be elderly people in the future. We see among ourselves that you get older to be in a senior center, but you may not have a need for senior residential housing. If you don't reserve some of this and think about the future as to, you know, watching where you go, you, you may not get that opportunity again to be able to do that. They're not staying here year-round. And you know, that's growing. Okay, well, uh, yeah, my, my version is much shorter, but uh, I'd just like to reinforce Nina's comments that basically the planning board uh, just interprets and applies the land use ordinance. And um, that's, that's our reference book, if you will. Um, I think in terms of, of issues, um, it would be might be worthwhile to define some sort of set of baseline that you want to to use as a reference point before you move forward with any sort of application in that zone. And, and by baseline, I okay, mean, well, I don't know, yeah, my, my natural baseline much comes much to mind. Like, just like to reinforce uh, of course, we are blessed to be in this location where environmental conditions are very healthy, you know, plenty of water, clean air, that kind of stuff. So you might want to define some baseline water quality uh, issues, issues um, air quality um, be, there's the solid waste is always a sort of an issue that you want um, to, but as well as I don't know, economic baseline I don't know before you establish some reference sort of point that you can measure application the development in that zone and, and by baseline and I mean, then um, natural baseline other than applying the land use ordinance uh, that's, that's blessed that's, to be in this location where environmental conditions are very healthy you know Plenty of water, clean air, that kind of stuff. So you might want to define some I was just thinking about baseline the water quality. Uh, so far, about uh, thinking about the future and then air quality. Toss out the idea. Um, Don't worry about solid the solid waste. Is always a, you know, an issue. Potentially um, rezone or give it its own But as well as name. I don't know economic um, baseline. I don't know. Kind of goes in establish some reference point, point that you can measure the, the development and the, the opportunity to, to make changes there and too. Then, um, that's what the town wants to do. Other than you know, applying for, the land use or, uh, ordinance. Um, that's, that's but it. there are you know we have the the visions of our areas and those visions were written many years ago uh, when other people were living here. I was just thinking about a lot of those people are still here today. Um, are those visions still 100% accurate? The idea, don't don't know. I think a lot of people enjoyed what that was, uh, but they may want to have that massage as well. Um, because those visions really, they have changed. No matter what, how good our land use ordinances are and so forth, you know, we have lost um, residential home stock for our folks who have around. We have more homes that are going into seasonal Those visions were written many years ago. Around the, um, uh, the year round. Um, so things are changing <coughs> across the town. Um, are those and they therefore are open up the opportunities for the elderly care where enjoyed, but, um, we've, we've made some changes to the land use ordinance to allow as well. um, um, a single because those owner who's really lost their spouse to be able to rent a room no what, how good to help them stay in their homes. So um, do they prefer to live somewhere lost, smaller in, a, in an area? Um, with others, I don't know, but maybe that is an opportunity for this area. Well. Obviously, we've talked about affordable housing, workforce housing, so forth, to try to bring in young families. We're losing you know, students at the school system. Um, 
Uh, as fire department, although we've had a, an influx of some young folks uh, just recently, uh, we still could use uh, uh, more young folks to, to join us. I think the average age is over 55 when we're responding to a call. I wonder who's lost their so, spouse to be we can't stay in the building as long to help them stay as we could when we were young. Would they prefer Use more to air. somewhere smaller um, an area? With so others? I guess it's really, it is a whiteboard in my opinion. Because uh, these things can all change. They're just documents. They can be retyped. We go to the voters and try to explain what we're trying to do. We can get their opinions. Systems, uh, hopefully it passes. Uh, if it doesn't, we can go back to the drawing board. Comprehensive plan took many attempts before it finally got passed. So, so uh, I, to, to join us. You know, I think your point is true. Average average is over 55 it's it's what we feel we need for this town, and hopefully we get a lot of feedback from the town folks, and not just us here, on what they see the needs are and what the, um, what they want to envision this town. So I guess it's really, a, it is a way. You know, is that becoming the, the new center? Where there's a town hall and the fire department, and, 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 and there's some stores, stores and you know, the hardware store at the market fairs. Uh, can support uh, that. It'd be nice to just in. drive there versus the you know, the Home Depot or many attempts across the way of Port Hardware to get get what you need. So, so I, you know, I think your point's true. Well, to me, it's an ideal situation because of the connectivity. Uh, many years ago, before CDMK, we thought about that for our school. Uh, we obviously don't need that land for a school now, but. One thing I would like to see left on the table is the possibility of municipal building. Um, it meets both both ends, and we obviously we talk about the fire department, and we may be going eventually, sooner or later, to a paid fire, and we are also very quickly, if not, we haven't already done. Well, to me, it's an ideal situation. So it's something that I would like to see left on the table. Considered. Many years ago, CDMK, we thought about that for our school. Uh, we obviously don't need that land for a school now. Uh, from the trust point of view, one of the specific things we uh, would like to see, if possible, is a uh, the opportunity for a trail system that would lead out of Dock Square. The trust currently maintains 20 miles of trails in town, but it would be, and, and one of the goals is to connect all parts of the community into that system. And this property would lend itself nicely to um, to be a part of a network that left Dock Square and worked its way up into the central corridor of where most of the trails are. Uh, from the trust so point if of view, whatever was built there could, could be done uh, in a manner where um, would like to see if there was open space a, uh, about the opportunity uh, for a trail system and some of it could out be used for that square. connectivity. Current I think that would be a great thing. Miles of trails it also would be nice if, but it would be if and one of the goals there is, to is housing up there. Community. Um, into that system, or, or and this property or a, would lend itself a community nice center, or other type things. That uh, there are passive ways of part of a network of, re of reaching its way up Cape Orpheus and downtown and the consolidated schools. So that so if um, whatever is built, there, how many people can do manner can ride their bikes to school or or walk to downtown? Space, that's uh, about. That's a reduction of traffic and some of it could be congestion. That and activity. this is an opportunity to create scenic. It also would be nice if, um, if passive, beautiful ways there, of getting from one point to another um, um, or, or from this or property. A community center or other type things that there are passive um, ways sure. of, <clears throat> um, of, rec of the, our the housing committee, as you know, is Cape Corpus and downtown um, and the consolidated school. So that, increasing. Um, how many uh, people can do it or ride their bikes to school or, or walk to downtown, that's, um, that's a reduction of traffic and congestion. Uh, this is an opportunity uh, to create scenic, and we um, in the early passive, of beautiful ways of getting from one point to another focus, uh, so far has been from this to property. Look at the entirety of the town. We're hoping um, to sure. be um, able to construct the, our, the housing uh, committee 25 now, homes for uh, 25 households by increasing 2025. Uh, the supply um, so that's not that far away. We hope to really actually begin the process um, with the first few sometime hold the line on uh, year round residents or so. And, but and we've, we've and talked to the uh, public, to selectmen about. The focus, uh, you know, whatever we do, 
is look at the entirety of the solving this problem or addressing the issue. The app has got to fit within the character of the town, either as we know it now or as it becomes defined, you know, looking forward. And our sense is that the affordable housing should be actually scattered throughout the town. We, we don't see, with the first we haven't defined it precisely, but we don't think there should be any, ideally, it should not be any large concentration. It should just be part of Kenny Bumport. So whether or not this parcel may become solving um, this problem or part the issue. of a solution to the got fit housing situation, that's obviously to be determined. As we know in the meantime, as it we will continue our efforts in looking at parcels and of land our senses um, that scattered throughout the town. And portable housing should you know, be we'll see where all of this scattered is. throughout the town. We really uh, don't see in, in addition, I, I think some interesting points have been brought up here today. Just if you would sit back and take a look at it and say, okay, you've got a parcel, and it's got water and sewer, and in the context of doing anything in this town uh, of a structural nature, this is the basis that gives you the opportunity to do a first-class work of art. And you could say, well, you look at the parcel, it's jagged the way it's shaped up. I believe it would be very in addition to have I think some additional land donated that sort of gives you the opportunity to make this into a really grand area of the town. I echo what you were saying about having and in the context of doing a village commons out here in the West structural where you can put a couple of small shops in there, whether it's a sandwich shop or a coffee shop to do or whatever it is you want there. Work the housing, housing trust has the ability to say, well, okay, we can do that, parcel. we can put its apartments above it, the way it can be rented out. out. You I have a, an area that's large enough for people who live in this region, land, not just in the village parcel, you the opportunity but Wallace Woods and any of the others, rather than having to go into town, they could I come echo here what you were and saying about do having a, a, you know, whatever they can, come sit and talk and visit and enjoy life. You wouldn't be overrun by a lot of people, shop. So it's, it's an opportunity to look that way. We offer as a housing trust offer you okay, not just to do that. We offer you apartments above apartments can be rented out. We offer you you have the duplex, the triplex an option. So it can reach whatever you want it to look like. But Wallace Woods and any of the others, people to keep rather than having to go into town. This is the foundation of an opportunity to build a village west. You know, whatever the they can, you know, with the town's visit requirements, and enjoy the life, you know, the things that you need to have overrun by going forward, forward, because that so frees up opportunity to look that way. and the traffic we insane and the lack of parking that goes on for people who live here year-round need to go in and pay their taxes. So, so, so just duplex, a thought, triplex you know, option. Think so in a long term. Be whatever you want it to look like. And that's what we want people to keep in mind. Uh, the third, third question, question uh, is what concerns does your committee have regarding gross demands and needs, and I think we kind of addressed an awful lot of these. With the town just moving out to the property to be used, and I think we should continue part of the dialogue going forward. some of these things will continue to come out. Frees up but I guess the next question I'll jump to is four. What design characteristics should be considered in the implementation strategy? <coughs> Not 35 stories. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. How about this way? Uh, the third question. Well, we, uh, as I said, we're, one of our concerns <coughs> is, <coughs> has been, is now, and will be, I think, is that whatever kind of housing we do, and our initial focus is on single family homes, they're going to fit within the town. They're going to look like their neighbors. They're not going to alter the, the viewscape or the neighborhood the implementation strategy. I think that's a kind of a fundamental principle. <laughs> it's part of preserving the character of, of our town okay. from, a, from a visible and you know, community well, we, uh, um, as I said, a living standpoint. One of our concerns is to spin, spin on that because you're so close to the village area itself. In the density is a lot. It's a higher density than what other parts of the community are. 
In fact, even what the, the two the village residential and the free enterprise zone allow. I mean, in terms of village character, how do you perceive that type of current character being incorporated into this parcel, which in a sense means a higher density is a possibility. Yeah, going further, wouldn't it be nice if 50 or 100 years from now, look back and say, this was a really great idea that somebody did. You know? And that's what this opportunity brings to us. So we can combine the many different elements. Nina was talking about you know, the trees in town. The shade tree committee could probably make a suggestion for an arboretum that would go through this area. So you've got an enhanced visual impact to the town. It's the way you would like it to be, you know, at the end of the day. Further, wouldn't it be nice if 50 or 100 years from now they were saying, this was a really one that somebody did. And that's what this opportunity brings to us. That's really for the broader scope We can combine many different growth planning. Nina was talking about, you know, the trees in what makes sense and what parts of town. The shade tree committee could possibly make committee a suggestion for an arboretum that would go through this area. So you've got an enhanced <coughs> visual impact to the town. I guess from the trust point of view, it's just the look, feel, and character of the community. And, and uh, I think the question about density. I don't think we have any objection at all to a larger density in the same context <coughs> as, as that part of town is. And um, so, so just a broader scope. The we include the village planning and the steering mm -hmm. committee uh, to, to see whatever, what makes sense in what parts of town, sure. I think. And the housing committee would fit you know, whatever the design characteristics. Um, again, I, think I guess from the trust point of view, well, the interconnectivity is, feel and character of the is community. very key. I'm and thinking more from and, uh, fire department standpoint because uh, even today trying to respond to the station on the other side in the same context is. Difficult, is right? Part of the don't have that open to us from uh, outstanding. So just um, from the growth planning committee, which, um, you, you mentioned that it's, you know, the area does provide that opportunity for a little more density in our housing because of the look and feel you get when you're driving up north from here. Right. Um, on the other end, it's a little bit different. It's a little more open. Those, um, well, the interconnectivity is. We might look, look at that density more on this side, side versus, versus, the, versus the, uh, school the school streets side. today, trying to respond from uh, village just station to the other side during the summer. It's uh, difficult, right, to be able to have that open to us. Right. Uh, outstanding. Um, from the growth yeah, the committee, sure. um, you, you mentioned that it's a mixed use, I think, is always right. It does provide that just opportunity to feel the village. More density in our housing because right. of the look and feel you get when you're driving up North Street here. So, um, when I see design characteristics, I mean, it's kind of a broad topic, but um, what comes to mind is um, it might be useful to have a statement of objectives in uh, defining a few categories, kind of summarizing what we've heard here already. You know, the municipal objectives, uh, objectives for municipal um, inclusion in the site, uh, the commercial aspect, the residential, uh, environmental, and then some kind of temporary um, catch-all category at the end, but um, I think that might be a useful way to capture so, uh, when I say design, design characteristics, I mean, it's kind of a broad topic, but um, what comes to mind is um, uh, it might be useful to have a whole segment, segment of the population, of the population here and what you can do with them. Kind of um, you're, you're talking about affordable housing in terms of single-family houses and so forth. That's, that's a step that if people are taking now later in their life. The commercial People's lives are very busy, and you've got a free enterprise zone where you could build condos or small apartments that could be beautifully landscaped for people who are constantly on their commuters working from home but are singles. And, and want to be single, single for a while. Whole segment of and you know, later on, you can do it. they may want to move um, into a family, family home, they may get married, but people are getting married later and later, and they're very busy, and they don't want that property around them that they have to maintain and take care of when they're younger. People's lives are very busy. But if you had housing, like condos or maybe small single houses that were that maintained by an association, for people who you could work people into appreciating 
the beauty of the landscape and Kenny Monk was around a while. And as they were growing and as they were developing, and you have more and more people that are staying single longer and longer, and I think you should attract some of these people. It's not just early in the schools, it's that they're having kids later, and when they're younger, you know, they will build schools, but if you had housing, like this, condos, is, this is a population, population change. Single houses that uh, were right. and, and, uh, maintained you know, by our, an association. Right you could, could work people into appreciating the, the, the beauty of the landscape and Ken Bunford around them so as they were growing and as they were developing. And you have more and more people that are staying single longer and longer, and I think you should attract And them. a lot of them are coming from urban environments, and if you want to integrate them into forest paths, which I think is a great idea, and appreciate arboretums, this is basically let them live in the arboretum or live near the arboretum. Well, yeah, no, that, that's ideal. No, let's keep in mind, if we're going to serve the entire town, the community, the seniors have expressed through the various committees that have done studies that they don't want to leave. They would like to be part of a community. So and a lot of them are coming from urban environments. Work for them and if you want to integrate them into the other people, why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Give, give them a small village where well, they can interact with each other. Let's have 5G in the solar picture because yeah, if you yeah. have that capability electronically, you, you can, can do yeah, all these that's, things. That's that ideal. No, Let's keep in mind, if we're going to serve the entire town, the community, the seniors have expressed through the various committees that have done studies that they don't want to leave. They would like to be part of a community. So would a cluster work for them as part of the other people? Why not? Why not? It would give them a small village where they can interact with each other. Let's have 5G. Yeah. Yeah. Does this parcel location have that capability electronically? Do you want to be connectivity to the village area and to cables? If so, what should those connections include? Well, your connection can include, for example, if you, you can, can work it from this parcel, from, from downtown, downtown village through this parcel, bike paths or walking paths to the key quarters to help connect them so that the people who live here can connect. Um, in the winter, that could be used for cross-country skiing and they could connect with each other and you get more communication. We've all got an opportunity here because of the connectivity that you point out. Why not... Uh, Find a way to include the trolley well, so people that are in this area don't drive into the docks where they can, can get a trolley stop somewhere, somewhere along here, maybe two, two and they, they can get on the trolley, go in, and have dinner at Allison's, and come, come back. So there's not a parking issue. There's, so it allows the village west, as I call it, to be part of the town, but not in the way, because it doesn't require all the support structure that you have in town. Got an opportunity Just here. a thought, because of the connectivity, as you point out, why not uh, find a way to um, um, the trial so, so people that are in I mean, the uh, drive in? I, I, I think, think that's speaking, speaking literally, literally, we, 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 we uh, uh, you know, to find the, uh, maybe two, the village area of Kenny Bunk Board is, is, is the west to find in our land use to work in the comprehensive parking issue. So it allows Finally, the village of West, as I call it, to, to be part of the town, but not in the way, because it doesn't require a broad the question. support structure. What it is it about how the stock, stock and the way the streets and the neighborhoods are laid out in the village area surrounding? Um, so, I mean, uh, I, I think, yeah. speaking literally, we, we, we uh, to find the... Uh, the village area of Kenny Bunkport is, is so what's defined as the land use to ordinance and the comprehensive plan. I don't, I don't know if the well, well you, you know, know the, 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 the quaint uh, characteristic of a lot of the, uh, of the housing and that's even captured, captured in some of the new new developments. Is, uh, you don't have a you don't have a big thoroughfare going through here. You know, when the seven mile or speed limits, and you don't have a uh, you, you know, there's a certain uh, uh, appeal of the, 
the, the winding, winding roads, roads that follow the old cow paths, paths I guess you should say. Don't have, so, so it's not laid out, out in squares, squares right, like, like some, some, some places are. are. So, so, you know, retaining, retaining all of that, uh, uh, you know, the characteristic quaint. Uh, uh, and, and of course, the, the other uh, uh, of the housing, the other, other that's even captured. Uh, it's not exactly, exactly unique, unique, but it's, it's not, not so common. common. You don't have everywhere. Uh, you don't is, have uh, the size of the lots, you know, the one acre, two acre, three acre lots. Per house, you know, there's, uh, there's a, of course, course a certain uh, you got to have for the appeal well or the septic, septic but, but still, still winding roads that follow makes a nice uh, buffer between the neighbors. It's not laid out in so, squares, right? Uh, like some some places are. So you know, you know retaining uh, that uh, <coughs> could be uh, useful. And then, of course, the other. So uh, we, we, we describe. The village area. It's not exactly uh, unique, but it's not so common uh, and this is everywhere. From the visioning, the sizes that took the lots, you know, two thousand acre, two acre, three acre. Uh, and it's really short, short but I'll per quickly house. read it. Uh, the main street, village residential area, would would be in the center for municipal services in town with a town hall, fire station, library, improved sidewalks and bike paths will make it easier to get around. The tree canopy overhead will be encouraged and maintained. This historic homes and structures will be preserved and maintained. Traffic will flow smoothly. So, uh, <laughs> and all the parking and bed and breakfast establishments will be encouraged in our buildings. So that kind of gives it flavor, I think, what we'll see in 2001 in that area. Um, and I think it really should sure provide that. that. So this area, area, Main Street I Village Residential Area, will remain the center for municipal services in the town hall. Well, remember, remember that, that vision didn't include this option. option. Bike paths will make it easier no. to get around. So, you know, they, they were looking, looking at what they had to deal with at the time, and then that, that was kind of where they came down. down. But, but if, if someone, someone laid this out, out front of them and said, now what do you think? And all day parking it might be someone in breakfast establishment. I mean, going, going to, to the library, if you get on the trolley and, and go around, that's easy enough to do. Everybody can get there. Walk if they prefer, but if they don't, they can ride. Mm -hmm. Well, remember, that vision didn't include this option. Well, with no historic so, district you know, they were in the town of Kennecott, what, they what? To I like to just to say the time, that the village is that blind block. Where they came sure. down. <laughs> 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 they laid this out in front of them and said, now what do you think? It might be somewhat of a different thing. I mean, going that, there's to nothing the to say that if you had multiple apartments and that sort of thing, that those couldn't be constructed in a home that looked like the sea captain's home. So that... So that the the flavor of downtown was is reflected in this new parcel as well, or that shops couldn't be made to look like Chandler shops from um, well, no historic from the past century and, the town of and just updated. So just so new construction doesn't have to be a box and it doesn't have to be something that's <laughs> out of character with the community. It can actually uh, yeah. enhance the existing community. And putting the central the resources that there that, that, uh, that, sort of thing, that the central location would make it easier for the sea captains, uh, uh, people so living in town to get so to them, the thus reducing traffic downtown, downtown and was, making it easy on this new parcel uh, as well. easier on them as, that shops could as well. Be made to look like so the and shops the central connectivity, I'm all for the um, bike the trails and the and the uh, just updated so the walking trails so new all that sort of thing that would be a box and it that would have to be something that people would be able to passively the not in their cars get to one place actually, uh, to another and enhance the existing community the color my and hair, putting my central hair, resources there that largely uh, the golf the central location would make it easier for the, yeah that's a possibility uh, people living in town to get to them thus reducing traffic downtown and making making it easy on uh, easier on them as as well so, Question and the seven. central connectivity, I'm all for the bike trails and the, and the uh, mm -hmm. walking trails, all that sort of thing that would, that would have people be able to passively, not in their cars, get to one place. Identify a portion of the site to be retained for the future, yet to be determined to be found in the past. Discuss here. Okay, golf carts. Yeah, that's how the community would be able to retain a portion of this. Feelings in terms of when you start looking at that, in terms of retaining it. Question seven: What expectations? How much of the land area type of thing? Or brought out. Well, keep in mind that what happens in some cases is they say, "Let's save this for later," and when later comes up, they say, "No, I don't want to change it. I want to leave it the way it is. I want 
you know, that green grass and that sort of thing. So what you essentially have done is saved open land, which is what Tom is up to. It's not a bad so, thing. It's a free publicity. <laughs> hey, Bob, I have a question. And forgive me I, if I should know it or I haven't digested um, the list of meetings and, and how things work. Um, but when will the department heads I, meet to discuss what in some cases the is, is things say, that frustrate the town later, today? When later um, comes up, they say, no, so I, I think that I've you. heard that theme quite a bit. And, you know, and I'm grass, curious as to, like, when will that be introduced? Okay. Which is what Tom is Okay. It's not a bad thing. Right. It's a free publicity. Hey, Bob, I have a question. And forgive me, All I don't know what I haven't have digested the, um, the list of That seems to be a really big part of the discussion. Oh, yeah. um, yeah. But when will the department heads meet to discuss the things that frustrate the town today. Um, so I think that I've heard that theme quite a bit, and, and I'm oh, yeah. curious as to, like, when will that be introduced? Okay. There goes an asset plan. That's what I heard. I'll take it to my board. <laughs> I guess the steering committee is being a part of the discussion. There's a lot of yeah. responses from these different committees. Do you folks okay. have any questions uh, for the people that are here that help you in terms of this process or questions? You know, this, discussion, question? this discussion can, is uh, almost identical to the discussions <laughs> we've had already. So I think it's uh, really good to see that people have a I want to say like mine, but uh, that we all seem to be thinking in the same direction. And I'll be anxious to hear from when we get to the public uh, next next week, to the visioning sessions, the 30th, uh, next week. Yeah, uh, be, yeah next week. Uh, be anxious to see, I'll be almost what identical, what input we get there as well. Yeah. Already, I, so I'm thinking, thinking it's, it's really from what I'm hearing, it's pretty similar. People have a, I wouldn't say like mind, mm -hmm. but um, that we're all seem to be thinking in the same direction. And I'd be anxious to hear from the other. Well, the, 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 the thought I had about this uh, portion of the site to be retained, I mean, you, 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 my preconceived notion is that whatever is proposed is going to be some kind of phased development. You're not going to go out there and do everything all at once, right? I mean, it's going to be some kind of a... Exactly. So it's going to be a phased development. I mean, so there'll be a, some kind of a Im implicit... Exactly. It's going to be an implicit, you know, re retention... And time for people to make changes, right? A master plan basically becomes a guide yeah. for the town. You know, the end well, product should the, come the, through the, with what the vision the community this, uh, has for the property, the site to be retained, what makes I mean, sense you, you, in terms of My preconceived notion is that whatever is proposed is going to be some kind of Satisfy what the needs are. And, go out there and, do and then obviously, wants, right? I mean, the biggest aspect, aspect of any of this is always a dollar and cents. What does that mean for the community? What does that mean for the public-private partnership of getting an entity to want to come in and invest in being able to and time for people to do an affordable to housing change. project, as an example. A master you know, plan so those are the things that get brought through this whole process. The end and just like the comp plan, what the, the master plan is for that parcel is very similar in nature that it sense. could be in flux. You know, if you're looking at a 10, 20, 30 year plan, needs are. And then, as you were talking about in terms of the description of the village, of this, you know, in 2001, things have changed. What does that mean for the community? Ten years out from the time this plan is finished, things may change. You know, so an entity then the community goes to back and to how to fine tune that. Being able to so basically, it becomes, this becomes the foundation that the town can work with. Those are the things that like any place else, this whole addition to all. You know, and just like you went up going back and looking at the master plan, plan, plan maybe I should have put the dining room over in this area or something that it could be in flux in terms of how the land you're looking at a 10, 20, 30 year plan. Yes. Yeah. No, you know, as we were talking about in terms of the description of the building. You know, I've you know, been sitting here listening to everybody, and you frequently use affordable housing, workforce housing, and everything. And that has images in people's minds 
it becomes, and I'm this becomes thinking a that's not an accurate picture that the town can work with. If we just talk about housing and call it heritage housing, you know, that's fine. You don't have to be more specific than that. But it, it will be something that is part of the community. And look at it in that term and context so that you're not saying, all right, you're, you don't want the big brand that's you know, been red sitting here listening to everybody. And you, Frequently you know, used for affordable, affordable housing, housing a, workforce yeah. housing, everything. Right. Yeah. And that well, has it. You. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. anyway, the point is, you know, yeah. let's yeah. take yeah. the emotion yeah. out of it yeah. so we can focus yeah. on if we just what we're trying housing, to achieve in a broad basis housing. for the town. That's fine. You don't have to be more specific than that. that but it, uh, it will be something that, that is hard to choose. We can uh, look at it in that term. People who are going to be here with us, you're not saying. All right, you you don't want the big branded, you know, red litter. Yeah, so uh, I'd like to just offer up a couple of thoughts, you know, just, you know, I've, I've been hearing a lot of things from many of you all, you know, as I've worked with you know, all over the years. Yeah, the point is, um, but yeah, also, let's take the emotion you know, have the unique opportunity to listen to a lot of uh, other members of the public that aren't part of the committees, you know, who come into town, and, you know, want to try to figure out what they, you know, what they can and can't do. Uh, one of the things that I see overall in the community and, and consistently hearing it, you know, is that, you know, the town is looking to attract a younger demographic, you know, or is looking to try to maintain that. So, uh, and so I, like I, I think an important question that needs to be asked of that demographic is, um, what is it that they want, uh, you know, within their housing choices, within their work choices, within their recreational choices, uh, and uh, other members of the I, I see it as a question that this community wants them, you want to and to so you want to make sure that you you know that you uh, want to set the stage uh, so that you can have those types of uses. Uh, you know, in you know in the, in the planning world, you know, we often you know hear now discuss the terms of you know of <laughs> the idea of being able to live, work, and play in the same location. Uh, you know, or within close proximity. What is it that they want? You know. You know, to those types of things. You know, that's you know, that's what your younger demographic is looking for. You know, they're not necessarily looking for bigger houses, uh, but they're looking for you know experiential uh, experiences. You know, and, and things that they can do. You know, that you so those are all you know those are important pieces uh, to keep in mind. You know, make sure that you're offering the things that that demographic wants. Um, planning world, you all need that here uh, now in this community. In terms of you know of the idea of being able to live you know, and work reaching out to you know millennials is going to be an important part of this you know important part of this discussion, not just uh, for the town overall, but in particular for this piece. You know, they're not necessarily looking for a couple of specifics that you know that. You know, experience. You know, having looked at the uh, different land uses around here, I think you know identifying you know all the current open spaces that are adjacent and making sure that you know where we have currently protected open space, you know, there's opportunities to create larger blocks of open space. Yeah, within this. You know, in particular, you know, you've got open space in Wallace Woods, Shawnee Woods, Fox Prairie. You know, all those. You know, you've got a couple of subdivisions, Bishop important part of the woods around you. You know, so you've got opportunity to kind of increase the size of those blocks of a couple of specifics that, space, you know, that I think are an important characteristic. You know, having looked at the different uh, we've talked here, uh, I think before as well about connectivity to other pieces, you know, future right-of-way connections. We should carefully look where we place those and make sure that um, they're not just arbitrary, you know, that um, you know, we want to make sure they've actually got a chance of working. Uh, uh, you know, I've seen plans where there's future right-of-ways that are shown that go right through a swamp that you just are never going to happen. You. So, you know, so you know, make sure that to, you know, we place those in locations that make sense. Of undeveloped um, space that I think are but I would also look at the um, pedestrian infrastructure that we have, um, in particular, I'm thinking in um, Foxbury Woods. You know, Foxbury Woods has some great sidewalks uh, within the neighborhood there. And so as we think about some level of connectivity to Foxbury, you know, that, um, you know, on the previous plan, there was a uh, there was a proposed uh, sewer easement to Foxbury. That location is probably a great place to put a pedestrian connection in there. You know, and maybe there's opportunity then to tie into the sidewalks. Uh, you know, in 
uh, but I Fox would also Ferry. Look at the, and maybe that connection gets that a little have, bit closer to the conservation trust uh, property. Fox you know, that helps make that Fox connection. Fox so, some great sidewalks, um, uh, within yeah, so those are some yeah. of the pieces that, uh, so that as I hope we that think about some level start to see flesh out uh, Fox on this particular plan. Um, you know, in the previous plan, there was a uh, there was a proposed um, sewer easement to Foxbury. Um, uh, that location is probably well, a great place to put a pedestrian connection. Right there, you know, and maybe there's opportunity to hide inside. You want all your parcels on the map. You know, in yes. uh, okay. Foxbury, yeah, you know, you know, maybe that yeah. connection yeah. and yeah, it gets a little bit closer stuff. to okay. the conservation trust yeah. property. Yeah. You know, that helps make that connection. So. And where um, I get the second yeah, so land those are some of the pieces that, uh, that I hope that we can start yes. to fall yeah. down. Yeah. Take a look at those open spaces there. Yeah. Uh, on, the, on another note as well, so, you know, oftentimes on plans, we always see buffers to wetlands. You know, and so I think it's important to think of those as, you know, as um, structural buffers. Um, but what I've also heard uh, is that there's, there's opportunity to be able to educate folks about wetlands. And so in an effort to educate people about wetlands, you know, I think it's important to actually bring them close to the wetlands, you know, in that regard. And so maybe there's opportunity for those, you know, for those paths, you know, uh, those trails that, uh, you know, maybe takes you adjacent to the wetlands areas. Um, you know, I think that's, that's an important piece. Oftentimes we find those resources and we, you know, we, we try to like hack to stay away from them and really to some level, what we want to do is we want to educate. Uh, we want to bring, you know, we want to bring people in to be able to closer in a protective fashion, and but so still in an in some, some way where we can, you know, you know I think it's important to actually to bring them uh, it's close to like the wetlands. It's kind of like that vernal pool that's in the back corner out there. That's a beautiful area. There are actually some old tunnel roads that run out through that area. It takes you adjacent to the wetland areas. So um, kind of nice you know, I think those are nice the educational opportunities. Oftentimes, right. you'll find those resources. Yeah, yeah there's, so a way to, there's a way to have access to those areas, areas not compromise, really, you know, the, to you know, the protective nature around that. We want to educate. You know, we want to bring, you know, we want to bring people in closer. Anybody in have any fashion, questions for but us? Still, for clarification at this point. Where we can, you know, where, where we can engage with it. It's kind of like that. Bro. It's kind of like that vernal pool that's in the back. Yeah. Of the All right. Um, I want to thank everybody for um, your participation today. Uh, it's, it, this is a what we consider a very um, large endeavor. And yeah, the more support to, we get from you all, um, the easier it's going to make you know, the, our you know, job. Sure. So thank you all for coming, and, and hope you continue to participate. Uh, we'll be, we have a schedule of meetings that we will be uh, doing. So um, hoping you pay attention to them all. Um, now I think if we have anybody in the audience who would like to make any comments. Uh, it's, it, this is a what we consider a, a very um, large endeavor, and the more support we get from you all, um, the easier it's going to make our job. So I'd thank like you to all thank everybody tonight to who continue to participate. Polite enough when they spoke, uh, we'll be, we have the microphone over so they can speak to at the end. So, um, hoping you pay attention. About to what I listened to today. Now I it think if we have what's been in my mind, would like to make any comments. Uh, I'd like to see happen. One thing I would like to see happen, even though a lot of people in town don't like the idea. I first thank we were pleased with the property was on North Street. Right enough that when they spoke, it didn't too big a piece. Over so they could but speak with a little bit of tree cutting of all the explanation, I think that you could, could make a been in my mind, nice little parking spot for like people to come into town, into town could park an IRB and then walk downtown. They have people money if they want to spend in shops. A lot of people in the restaurant like the idea. And if they had a place, little piece up there, up in that might toilet in the, the fire station, parking lot, could walk downtown. But with a little and I also learned that uh, an excavation during Christmas Quay moves could 
make a My son wanted to go to the parking spot by how chickly people eat them in the cooking. There was no room at all in the parking lot. Walk down so they turn around the home. They had people money we could make a and shop. Parking, more parking up that way. Close it right off after the plane blew them all to keep, keep it open. That much further. But uh, it would give a chance for some people to use an RV to come here so and don't have a car that, uh, dragging on behind them during the road. They could come in and maybe spend a couple of hundred dollars or so in the restaurant and gift shop. shop. There was no room at all in the parking lot. Yeah, uh, other thing, or two other things, other things. We could make them with Tom parking part of a parking up walking way. trail. Close it right off. I was also thinking that uh, maybe somehow but, uh, it would have been on your chance for some people at School Street and an RV to come here. That a uh, car dragging on the behind them. The kids feel about it. Well, it's seven feet wide. wide. They could come in and maybe could, uh, spend a couple of hundred uh, dollars or so in a trail, trail and gift shop around. The uh, other little thing, dream, or or anything, or maybe go along with Tom, spare uh, time from the town employee to make cut out and stain a little. That, uh, wood to make little bridges if they have a little thing, thing that they would go over in. At the same time, probably, it would make a good trick for people to walk to your bucket before it's very good they could walk on up through and it would run a little and hit the edge of the trail. Bike trail. Another thing is, along with that, for recreation, a little stream or anything, or it had to be looked at. But I know the time, enough hardwood on that property to down. cut out and stain a little. It may be wood to make a little bit of a place where they could have one of these zip lines. Moreover, maybe you could spit it as far as they go. But, uh, you get it out now, well, I'll be the first one on. <laughs> In a long time, I'm allowed to wear a pillow where it counts when I'm mad. <laughs> the uh, thing about affordable housing, maybe uh, I have been in a place where they could I like to show their Tiny houses on TV. Uh, Restrict it. And it's very easy, easy to get, but uh, sample plan and pictures of houses. You want to use it? And you, you could, could get it with the plan. <laughs> you get it built with the pictures. First one side, what uh, <laughs> it it more than you said you wanted, wanted what it would do, you think would put it in the best within the town. The thing about affordable housing. Now they're narrow at all, because they got to go on a road. Like so you could take, take and uh, put a foundation in, and maybe it's only six feet high, high if it's enough for a plan. Walk downstairs, have it for storage. The plan you could go 12 feet high, get the pictures on a wide, uh, and uh, maybe 30, 40, 60 feet long. I wondered what it would be a little shorter. I'd deem the best within the town. You could have a whole size upstairs. If you could buy it, but everything would still, still be a small, narrow, and low house compared to some of those that are building down along the shore. You could take and, uh, and uh, uh, you probably could get by with walk down a little help from town maybe on something. Some storage. You get a small house that it's uh, eighty to a hundred thousand dollars. And uh and maybe thirty they have a house, they have a lawn, maybe thirty <coughs> to a little shorter. A garden in the summertime size upstairs. Other thing is uh, it would still be a small two story house compared to apartments they're building down along the street. Maybe a whole line of them and uh, some of them like a could townhouse by the bedrooms in the upstairs from town maybe on and some dividing <coughs> wall. Get a small like house a fire even eight, 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 eight units. <coughs> but uh, they have a house that they built the right price. You could probably rent somebody in one house property. 
but uh, they could afford to have a place to make more people work in line of them. If maybe they could uh, rent for <coughs> thousand twelve hundred a month, bedrooms in the and uh, if people could some people would might rather live, live by a black and, 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 and with no maintenance cost, <coughs> but. Uh, uh, maybe the rent would get it figured out, go up the heat, water, and electricity would be included in it. Want a house and uh, property. But the uh, rental place is there for low income people. I think the rent is one of them, it's probably some others. And maybe they could maybe, uh, uh, rent for <coughs> thousand, twelve hundred. Change the federal subsidies <coughs> could uh, be brought uh, into it to uh, people could help these people. people. Could all do no, no but and with no maintenance cost. Most colleges do not uh, have somebody like the John T. B. get figured out the other day water and electric where he uh, included in it. So they're going to pay all their uh, food costs for their so to say be in it. Most kids get out of the school. One of them and there's probably some other ones. Anywhere from the uh Maybe 50,000, 60,000, up to 200,000 would uh, be brought into it. To, uh, but if they help you get a job around the area, a good paying job, do not but a low rent on TV, it would be a chance to get it come in where he uh, was going and to pay all this. Also, some young people coming in, they have been, they did their good tours. Get out of the school for people who are to go on anywhere else. We punish the fire department, maybe 50, 60,000. I don't know, guarantee you. Any of these people that are food doing food these million, two million dollar homes down on Ocean Avenue are not going to get called out at midnight. In January, drag holes up an icy ladder to spray some water on somebody's house. You're going to have to have a home. Oh, young people, people coming in, and you can give, give them an incentive to come to King Bunk Court and live. Probably they can be recruited. But I can almost guarantee you. No, no shut up. up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Million, Is there anybody else? A million dollar home down on Ocean Avenue. Yes. I'm not going to get called out at midnight in January. Drag the holes up an icy ladder. Uh, Young by people being to this land, land you can give them incentives to come to play shock shock to going in right next to my property. property. Probably, and no I can be recruited. Uh, we become intimately involved with the plans. How about shut up? Thank you. Is there anybody else? I think. I'm very, very encouraged to hear that if, if there, there is to be development, having it towards the school end makes more sense, sense because we're right, right at the bottleneck. North Street right, right now is incredibly busy. busy. We, we get, get a lot of traffic, traffic from the parking lot that's there when, when it empties out. out. Actually, uh, uh, people that come shooting out of the downtown Square area suddenly think that when they get past the firehouse, now the traffic restrictions don't apply. I've just and my wife has talked to, to the police about, uh, you know, no, it's very unsafe. And the road that they have very put in there is something like 30 feet further than our road. Makes more sense because we're right um, at the bottleneck. I think, I think the street right now really needs to think strongly about preserving traffic from the parking um, lots there when it empties out. The um, importance of shooting out of what makes the town of the natural area, suddenly, I think, having recreation areas is extremely important. Traffic I'm trying to afraid that you're just going to make it like the dock square, square, which is just a kind of conglomerate. I don't know, it's mess. Up in that area, the road that they have, and that would benefit the town of the square, is something like 30 feet further than our road. As far as traffic that would be benefit is something like 30 feet as far as affordable housing, low income housing. I just said what it is. Really need to think strongly. I think it would uh, be a tremendous disservice the importance to the elderly people who have grown up in this town, the natural beauty provided for this town, paid taxes for this town, to not have an area that they could afford to live in to downsize to. Getting younger families, 
I don't understand it. That wouldn't. I just don't understand it. Millennials, uh, what are we going to be the new South Portland? That isn't going to happen. Low income housing. Get a bunch of young families in there. What Next, it'll be a McDonald's. I mean, that's what young families want. They're not going to be eating at the White Barn. They're not going to go to the this to service. To the elderly but people, who have grown the people up who have paid, town. who have been here, who have grown up here, for this town. having an area for, for them town. in a but nice natural setting, an area, I think is is a logical thing to do. Downsides too. But again, I appreciate the people that are here in their time and their trouble, I just and uh, I'm that. very encouraged by what I hear that people are going to be throwing these ideas, ideas that out. That isn't going to happen. Thank you. Get a bunch of young families in there. Next, it'll be a McDonald's. I mean, that's what young families want. They're not I don't see anybody people. else. I'd like to speak as a private person. Sure. Not but for the planning board. board. The people who have paid, who have been here, who have grown up here, having an area for them in a nice, natural setting, I think is... Basically, I want to speak about three issues that really again, concern me. I appreciate the people um, that are here, your time and One your is that... Um, and, uh, I'm very encouraged by what I hear that people are going I think the abutters are shareholders, and I think they should be made a part of these meetings. I think they're stakeholders. I don't see anybody else? I'd like to and speak I think they have a lot to say sure. from living in the area. They know the area well. I'm not an abutter. I'm not trying to get in on anything. Um, but I've lived here now Basically, you know, I want to speak about for 20 or more years, really and me. I know the traffic problem that's faced on North that, Street. It's um, it's really been horrendous the last three years. I think the abutters. Um, I have tourists that come down my drive, set off my driveway alarms. Um, they think it's a way into the golf they course, so they're just out to be curious and, and say, oh, oh let's see where this goes. You know, say, even though I'm living in the area, it's a private residence. I'm not in a butter. I'm not trying to get in. But I'm even, even more concerned now, with the fact that I've lived here now. You know, the town for 20 or more sometimes years doesn't seem to traffic respect all of its residents. It's, it's really they don't allow enough time for residents years. to really give input. Um, I have tourists that and come down my drive, set off my driveway alarm. There's a uh, perception among people, course, you know, when you feel like you're left out, and say, oh, let's see you don't want to be part of a group right. anymore. It's a private and residence. you're concerned about people um, being seasonal residents here. But I'm even and seasonal more residents don't have a great stake in the town. But when the town people start feeling like they're not a part of the town or they're not listened to or they're not respected, then they start to say among themselves, let's go elsewhere. To really give input. And I've said it a couple of times to myself living here, you know. Um, there's a are we really being listened to? You know, when you uh, feel like you're left out, not just about you don't parcel, be part of a group anymore, uh, which you, you know we had to make a decision on really fast. I've heard a lot from people saying that there wasn't enough public the input on it. Don't have there weren't enough people voting. Down. But, but on, on issues that have come before the planning board, like not and people get really riled up, saying, "Is there a group in town that's really running this town?" They start to say among themselves, "Let's go elsewhere." That brings me to another issue that I don't like to bring up, but I'm going to. I think the Kenny Bunk Conservation Trust is a great, great group. Not just But they are a 501c3 corporation. They are one entity. Now, I think they've done great things for the town. There weren't enough people. Um, in fact, amazing things but for the town. On issues that have come before the planning. But there are times when people get really residents have saying, been very upset with some of the things they've done, town. and um, you know have had to put up with some of the things that they've done. That I don't like to bring and have had to fight to. some of the things that they want to do. I think the Kenny Bunk Conservation. And yet I sit here and I see one, two. But they are three, at least four people who have been prominent members or are prominent members of the Kenny Bond Conservation Trust. And yet, for stakeholders, we don't have one member of the Shade Tree Committee. Residents have been very upset with some of the things they've done. Oh, that's and, nice. Um, but why aren't they constantly you know, part of these meetings? The, the Shade Tree done. Committee is it's part of the town. It's a town that committee that looks at the trees, that looks at the beauty of Kenny Bunkwood. 
three at least okay. that the deals with the trees in town. Prominent members that goes through the Elm Watch volunteers. The Kenny Bunk Conservation no, Trust. That's funded by the town. Yeah, they're, they're not a separate, separate entity. Stakeholders. We don't have a separate one entity. Maybe a resident of the town. They own a lot of the town land, but they're not a town committee. Oh, that's nice. But why aren't they constantly part and of the town? And I wonder why that is. The shade tree and a lot of other people that I've heard, it's a know, town. I call them my constituency because now that I'm on the planning board and the shade tree committee, they call me up and they email me. Um, okay. But it deals with I hear in town. things like, why is this happening? Elm Watch volunteers. Is, is this group that's funded by know, the town? Uh, they're not a suddenly a part of the town. town. A separate entity, and maybe a that's not to negate the all the things they have done. I think Tom's ideas are great. They're right in line with what the Shade Tree Committee wants to do too. And I wonder. Yeah, I don't see a member of the Shade Tree Committee sitting here every time this group meets. I call them my constituents because now that I'm on the and I know three members, one past member and two current members, have applied to be on this committee. Why is this happening? We would love to make this town an arboretum. We would love to have trails through the wetlands, but we want a lot more than that. We want to educate the townspeople. We want to set up an educational system so when they go through those wetlands, they understand carbon sequestration. They understand how important those wetlands are to the forest, to taking up CO2. Okay. Meat. To the species, to and species extinction as part of climate change. When you lose a vernal pool, you lose species. On this committee. Well, we would love there's to a lot more to a trail that you, you can do the than West. just make it a but recreational a trail and a walking trail. We want to I've said before that people coming to into town don't understand the value and the beauty of the main woodlands and the main you know, landscape and the beauty of the trees in County Bunkport. They want to cut them down, get sunshine, have a lawn. To the species. To if you species, take people through those trails on a regular basis, they start to look at, oh, look, that tree has changed. I wonder what kind of a tree this is. And if you have a QR code on it, you can find out. To a trail that you, know, you can do. I want a lot of education in this town. Trail and a walking trail. I think that Tom does, too. I think that the Kenny Law Conservation Trust does, too. I think we could work together and make the main you know, beautiful trails and connectivity between Cape Corpus and the village and this parcel and even Arundel and the Eastern Trail. Probably not in my lifetime, but if you take I think it could be done. Trails, it could be done wisely so that people learn about the environment they're in and integrate with the environment instead of trying to find out modify that environment to what they think something pretty is. I think that Tom does too. I think that the Kenny Book Conservation Trust does too. I think we could work together and make you know, beautiful That's trails. basically all I and wanted to say, those three things. I think the Shade Tree Committee village, should be sitting here with some, some member even a of the Shade Tree Eastern Trail. Yes, Probably um, not in my lifetime, but, yes, but they're I not think here it could now. be done. So, it could be done yeah, wisely so really the people can the environment. Well, the fact that the Shade Tree Committee is not represented every single meeting or they're not here tonight. Instead of trying to modify that environment to what they think something pretty public and departments that we're going to be interviewing. Um, there are other committees that will be coming. The cemetery committee, for That's example, is going to be coming. But it's just we couldn't do everybody in one committee. committee should be. No, I understand that. So. No, I think what, what she's saying is that she thinks somebody from the shape should, should be on this committee. Yes. And, and you know, you know, we did the best we could as far as getting as many. Um, represented at every single individuals um, in, uh, in different areas together on this committee. I understand that, and I've spoken to Pat about it, and he explained to me how you made your decision. Um, That's there are fine. Other committees that will but be it's will, uh, what, what I'm going to say is it's, 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 it's not too late. I mean, if, if you wanted to send someone from the committee to each of our meetings, you are more than welcome to do that. We actually feel you know, a lot like, like you the best in that we want to maintain a lot of that as um, green area individuals um, so um, I, I, I know, know that different areas but what, what I'm wondering, wondering is together on this why there's three, three or four members, members of the Kenny Bunk Conservation Trust on here which is a separate entity is not belong to the town 
And they're, they're not on our committee. Our committee. It's, 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 it's not too late. I mean, if, if you wanted to send someone from the committee to each of our meetings, you are more than welcome to do that. We well, actually feel no, like this is part of the steering committee. I'm part of the steering committee. Um, I'm also part of the fire department. Green um, area. And I applied. So and I'm I, here I only for that reason. Is because I applied to volunteer to help out. Why I should three or four members of the Kettbun Conservation Trust? Someone who volunteered at the trust, um, and someone who goes on fire calls. So and the reason I'm here committee. is purely as a resident of Kettbun Port, and as I explained to the selectmen when I applied, was I think this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for our town. Um, I have no preconceived notions of what I'd like to see happen there. I just want to be part of a, of a strong working committee that takes the ideas of the public and of other committee members and other town agencies and do something really good. I'd like to be tomorrow or in the next 20 years. But I am purely here and on the fire department and at the trust and wherever else I am. As is, I'm here and is purely as a resident of For no other reason. As I explained to the selectmen when I applied, was I think this is I a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity but for this is account. not the perception um, of a lot of people. I have no preconceived notions of what I'd like yeah. to see happen. It's, it's the, the Kenny Bunk Port Conservation Trust Committee that takes the ideas yeah. of um, the public and of other After being on the board for almost 15 years, years there was a, there's no way you can please all of the people all of the time. And, and, and most of the time when you hear from them, it's a complaint and not a compliment. And those complaints really are um, for no other reason. I think fewer and more far between than the people who have come up to many of us and have said, boy, am I glad you did that. It's the Kenny Bunk Port Conservation. You know, am I glad that you're steering it in the right direction. So um, you're going to have the dollars, but you're also going to have... I think many more the people who the are time. pleased and with wasting the time when you hear from them, it's I'm pleased with the way things are going. Not a compliment. Okay. I have no problem and with that. Those complaints okay. really are um, good. So, so I, I think, think that you bring up a valid point about how public, public can participate, and mean, part of it be because we've got the public planning committee, many of us get ready and for. Said, I, I just want, want to remind that. people about you know, the May 30th public kickoff meeting. Public kick you're staring at the right direction. May 30th meeting so, will be here um, in this building. You're going to have um, the dollars, so it will be an but you're also going to have I mean, similar I to what you guys experienced more. tonight and then an opportunity to start to get public comment. Just regular people. I'm pleased with you. And then um, okay. I have no problem. July 13th. Okay. Uh, at Consolidated I School, think that you bring up a public vision about session how public from 9 to a.m. to noon. And if people, people can't, can't make it from 9 to noon, the consultants will be back in this room. I just want so to the morning we'll be at Consolidated <coughs> School, and then later that weekend we'll be back here. People can stop by and see how the consultants are working and the vision is going. So, so we're asking everybody who's here and all the different groups that are being um, recognized to help us get that word out. We're advertising it, but certainly. May 30th um, and July 11th are important dates um, for people. Uh, but we also have uh, more meetings coming up. The next meeting will be June 11th. And uh, we will be at the police department because that's election day, so we can't be here. And um, then we'll have June 25th that here. So we'll be doing more interviews, and um, they're always making the selectmen are making sure that there's a chance for public to put it again. So there are lots of opportunities for people to have input, and we hope that people will find the time or some way to connect. But certainly May 30th and July 11th are important dates um, for people. Um, but we also have... Okay. Um, but but my my next Let me say one thing. How many on the Shade Tree Committee has ever gone into the town office and, um, and asked for their name to get put on the mailing, email mailing list, who um, will tell everybody sure when there is a meeting, what time, and where? I wanted to know, so I made it a point to fill out the form in the town office so I could get notified of the selectmen meeting, these meetings. All the other meetings. So for the people in the thing, three committee how many cannot go on their own into the town office or have their wife do it 
and ask and get their name, name on the list. list. Just another thing to do. do. Mail, mailing list. We'll and you don't have to tell everybody when the meeting starts. I'm in the way. I wanted to know, so I made it a point to fill out the form in the town office so I could get notified of the selectmen's meeting, these meetings, and all the other meetings. So the people on the three committee can not go on their own in the town office or have their wife do it and get their name on the list. All right, move to adjourn. And you don't and have to come to town office. You can go on our website. website. At the bottom. Thank, Thank you, everyone, everyone for, for coming. coming. You're all. Good report. The check now is just for the board and parcel committee. If you just want any agendas from this committee, you can, or you can check a, a myriad of things. And to answer your question, there are many people in the Shade Tree Committee who are on that list and who get that. What I'm saying is there should be someone from the Shade Tree Committee on the steering committee. Okay. Thank you, Nina. Thanks, okay. Nina. All right. Um, move to adjourn. Anyone? So Second. All in favor. Yay. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you all. Good input.